We're going to introduce the next um, speaker now. This is going to be Nathan Schneider with the talk, Exit to Your Community. Nathan, hello. Hello. You hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you great. Thanks so much for joining us and looking forward to seeing your talk. Go right ahead. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Well, welcome uh, from wherever you are. Welcome to Colorado. I'm actually physically in Colorado, not in Denver, but uh, but but close enough in Boulder. And it's great to have you. I want to step back a little bit from the kind of bleeding edge crypto stuff that we've been talking about uh, and, and talk about how this is part of a longer tradition. We've been talking about the ownership economy this morning uh, in this session, and the idea of an ownership economy, it sounds kind of its kind of new and fancy. It's like a, a new brand on the block here, but it's actually nothing new, um, particularly here in this state, but probably also where you are. Uh, the idea of co-owning things um, is very old. Uh, what you're looking at is a picture of the Colorado Cooperative Company, a, uh, according to a recent newspaper article uh, reporting on it, back in the 1890s, it was a socialist-based ditch company, that's water ditches, uh, organized in Denver with the intent of establishing a colony for its members. Um, cooperative businesses, other kinds of shared ownership are a long tradition here. You know, my grandfather grew up as a farmer in Colorado, didn't get electricity on the farm that he grew up in until uh, the rural electric cooperatives started emerging in the 1930s. Um, he later ended up becoming part of uh, uh, working for a national hardware cooperative co-owned by hardware stores. Um, I have a, a, a kind of second cousin in the area who, uh, for better or worse, was part of the effort to make United Airlines employee owned. He was a pilot and ended up uh, really suffering in that deal because it, it wasn't structured right and and he ended up uh, losing a big chunk of his retirement in the process. So so um, I've known in my family how how shared ownership can have real uh, real uh, strengths and, and real benefits as well as real downsides. Uh, but this is a, a long tradition and it's a tradition that um, that Colorado's really been uh, leading on. Uh, right now, Colorado has, really the best laws for cooperatives in the country, in addition to its uh, powerful support for, uh, for blockchain businesses, it's become the place where uh, actually co-ops from all over the country are now incorporating, um, kind of like Delaware is for C-Corps. So Colorado is, um, is really leading the way. So it's really fitting that we're having this discussion at least virtually here. Uh, but there's a whole range of ways in which before blockchain, people were structuring shared ownership through co-ops, as I've mentioned, uh, through ESOPs, which are employee stock ownership plans that for, uh, enable 14 million Americans to be co-owners of the businesses where they work, uh, and trusts, which are also part of ESOPs and, and, and are increasingly being used more and more uh, to enable some shared ownership. And I've been exploring uh, ways in which we can bridge these two um, traditions, fusing um, the kind of new bleeding edge startup culture um, and, and particularly crypto startup cultures uh, with this longer legacy of shared ownership to see if they can help each other. Um, both have problems. You know, the, the legacy is getting kind of stale. Um, the bleeding edge stuff is, you know, is always in a regulatory gray area and is having trouble getting off the ground. Can they, can they help each other? And that's why a year ago um, at the East Denver uh, uh, related event, uh, Sustain Web 3, I, I first presented this idea of, of exit to community. This is an idea of trying to put together, you know, the early phase startup culture uh, that, that we know and love with the goal of, of being able to exit, not just to an IPO or a corporate acquisition, but to community ownership, uh, to ownership by the people uh, of the project, by the people who know and love it, uh, who use it, who rely on it, um, as well as uh, providing benefits in that exit uh, to the people who created it and put their their risk 
uh, an investment into the effort. And so this conversation has uh, grown a lot in the last year, even though we've all been stuck at home. I was planning to be traveling the world, uh, uh, connecting communities around this idea uh, over the last year, but that didn't happen. Instead, I've uh, just been running a bunch of webinars and, and things like that. This is uh, me talking about this idea a year ago. Um, remember those days when we could actually see each other in person? That was that was cool. I spoke uh, at, at Sustain Web three just before uh, uh, Vitalik Buterin, who then you know since then has been talking about this exit to community idea, um, thinking about his own role within the broader Ethereum community. That's helped to socialize uh, this exit to community frame. Um, and and help um, help some uh, projects in this space think about what they're doing uh, in these terms. So I'm going to share a few of those projects. A little bit of that shilling John was talking about earlier, um, like Roll, for instance, which is creating infrastructure to allow um, influencers and community leaders to kind of build their own co-owned communities of their you know, their fans and and supporters. Um, Fairmint, which is creating a kind of, which is a you know DeFi solution that's creating a new way to create like continuous exits. So exit isn't something that you happen have just once, uh, but rather you have ongoing liquidity events uh, using a bonding curve. And these are projects that have have uh, you know intentionally and explicitly kind of aligned themselves with this. Uh, exit to community idea. Um, and then Variant Fund, a new fund that is uh, uh, working in this space really very much with the uh, uh, idea of enabling community ownership as a means of growing startups. And it's really exciting to see um, to see to see that come online. Um, and then um, uh, Opolis, our, our co-hosts here, uh, are, are already really on the cutting edge in um, blending these traditions um, in they're, they're actually forming a a, uh, a Colorado cooperative they have formed um, and they are using that cooperative method uh, that cooperative legal mechanism to bring their you know their their uh, utopian crypto universe online and uh, and above ground in the regulatory universe so it's really exciting to see that merger happening uh, in the context of Opolis. Um, also, in the last year, in, in around September, late uh, August, uh, my lab at the University of Colorado Boulder uh, put out uh, the uh, an exit to community primer, co-authored by uh, founders and entrepreneurs and, and a, an investor and a, a lawyer um, uh, about the kinds of options out there for exit to community. Uh, it's about 72, 74 page uh, booklet that uh, you can get online uh, for free. I'll, I'll share a link a bit later, but uh, please check it out. It's it's kind of a list of, uh, you know, a collection of, of writing about, you know, why this idea is important and, and what people can do to make it work. And out of that, we uh, held a a cohort, a kind of peer leading, peer learning cohort uh, of different startup founders who are interested in this exit to community idea. Um, people mainly early stage who are trying to figure out how to uh, sell this narrative to their investors and to their uh, to their other stakeholders to help them see what it could mean and why it could be powerful to uh, eventually work their way toward uh, toward community ownership. And at the same time, like the big bad evil companies that I sometimes think of myself as as fighting against are are doing the same thing. Um, in 2018, Uber and Airbnb both asked the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, to um, allow them to share more equity with their with their users. Um, and they didn't really get what they wanted at the time. The SEC has been moving a little bit in this direction, but not quite enough. Uh, but Airbnb has gone ahead, uh, right ahead of its IPO, and and set up the structure for an endowment uh, and an advisory board eventually that would be elected by by hosts. Um, and so they're kind of creating a virtual structure within the company uh, in lieu of being able to really share ownership. Um, but it's just a signal that the these you know startup founders that are early stage and 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 radical and trying to do something really different um, are are actually seeing some of the same possibility for 
um, incentive alignment uh, uh, that uh, that some of these largest companies in the online economy uh, are seeing as well. So where does all this um, where does all this lead? Um, I, I've been uh, uh, thinking about this uh, uh, this connection a lot. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot to be gained from a kind of marriage of co-op values uh, and crypto uh, creativity. You know, the cooperative movement that has existed since the mid 19th century is um, all about uh, uh, democracy, about mutual education, about community uh, service and 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 um, concern for community cooperation among cooperatives. And, um, and these sorts of values uh, also, you know, in some ways have had a tension with the kinds of values that have arisen in, you know, in, in crypto communities. For instance, one thing that cooperatives really aim for in some respects is to kind of decommodify um, some of our business relationships, to make it less about, about, um, about transactions and about passing around tokens um, and, and make it more about um, and it, creating spaces where we can bring our values into the business and we're not just kind of operating on these robotic markets. At the same time, a lot of these, a lot of this cooperative legacy is in need of a reboot. It's, uh, you know, a lot of these big cooperatives out there, the rural electric cooperatives, like the one that uh, brought electricity to my grandfather's uh, farm, uh, you know, is, is pretty much just kind of keeping things going. They're not pushing boundaries the way they could. And I just can't even imagine what could be possible if we brought some of the creativity uh, from this space uh, into, into those kinds of spaces, the kind of creativity around governance, uh, around, around new kinds of uh, financial structures like the, the bonding curve that, that um, Fairmint is using, uh, just opens tremendous possibilities uh, for that older tradition of cooperative business. So I'm, I'm really hopeful about what this uh, can make possible. And finally, the regulatory possibility. You know, a lot of people in crypto have been trying to figure out how can we make it legal for people to invest in, you know, ordinary people to invest in our projects at the outset and then be co-owners owners and stakeholders uh, of the thing they've just invested in. And the cooperative tradition has been doing that legally for over a century. Um, so precisely the things that are so hard uh, in, the, um, in, in the crypto world are the things that this tradition has to offer. Um, and, and they have some really important lessons about how to do that right, how to protect uh, the people who participate in appropriate ways um, so that there's you know, lower likelihood of exploitation um, but it, there, there are so many ways in which these two um, uh, uh, teams, the co team cooperative and team crypto can, uh, can come together. And one thing I'm really excited about is that actually ETH Denver itself um, is in the process of adopting this cooperative tradition and, and converting into a, um, into a co-owned uh, 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 event and, and, and platform. Uh, so, ETH Denver, which you're participating in today, is undertaking its own exit to community. And if you're interested in uh, an exit to community of your own, I'd love to hear from you. We've got a bunch of resources at um, the, the uh, website of the Media Enterprise Design Lab uh, at CU Boulder, where I work. Um, and you can find more at this link here. This, this short link, we've got our zine, we've got information about our cohort, we've got a whole bunch of um, webinars archived there. And we've got another one coming up on the 26th on Friday at, at 2 p.m. You can sign up uh, there at that, at that website as well, where we'll be going deep on some of the intersections between exit to community and, and emerging uh, crypto technologies featuring uh, co-founders of Roll uh, and Fairmint. Um, so really, really looking forward to, uh, to to deepening this conversation. And again, I'd love to hear from uh, from any of y'all if you're if you're interested in getting more involved. Thank you so much uh, for hearing me out, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, to the 
the East Denver exit to community uh, that is now underway and, 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 and deepening our, our community together. Thanks. Thank you so much, Nathan. Um, actually, if you can take a question, I think, uh, do we have a minute for questions um, backstage? Absolutely, we've got three minutes left, so I'd love to hear some questions. Let's see what the chat's saying, and I can read them off to you. Yeah, I've not seen the chat, so it'd be great. Sure, I'd love to. Um, let me just check it out. Loving all these post-internet platformist examples. Uh, love the Coke, Coke, Co-cop, I think they meant co-op spirit. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, <laughs> not co-cop. Um, so, what? What? I guess I can ask a question for this kind of um, this cooperative spirit you're talking about and stuff. Wait, let me see if there's a question. Oh no, they just corrected their name. Um, how? How do you see like Ethereum community specifically fitting into this? As far as what? Like, what's the next thing we can do? What's the next step? to like accomplishing this? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, the, uh, a real critical step is, is things like what Opolis is doing right now, which is working with, for instance, legal experts here in Colorado who are, um, who know the cooperative model really well and finding ways to fuse those two um, in a, you know, in a business structure. And, and again, Opolis and, um, you know, and a few others are starting to, um, are starting uh, to to do that. There's there's one called Dorg that's uh, a kind of um, DAO based uh, a tech consultancy uh, that's done the same. But those kinds of experiments are really important because we can all learn from our pioneers. Um, and so if you see an opportunity in what you're doing um, to to bring you know the crypto above ground with the cooperative legal structure. Um, you know, talking to someone like John uh, Poller, who you just heard from, who's doing it with Opolis, um, you know, is, is a wonderful way to start. Um, and, you know, just recognizing and, and learning about this tradition as well, um, learning about the kind of variety of, of um, cooperative models that have been around in the past. You know, Visa was formed as a cooperative initially. Um, you know, the idea that you could transform financial markets through these kinds of models. SWIFT is a cooperative um, is not is not new, um, and and you know this tradition can provide lots of inspiration. That's a great answer. Thank you so much. Uh, very interesting talk, and thank you so much for attending. Uh, have a great day. You too. Thank you.